Hi everyone. We will review lab experiments one, two, three, four, five, and six today, and also perform the lab exam exercise. Instructions for the best results of this exercise. Make sure you repeat lab experiments one, two, three, four, five, and six as many as possible before taking this exercise. Don't worry if you repeat your lab experiments, only your highest score will be recorded uh, in your grade book. Prepare some pieces of paper and pen or pencil to write your answer. Take a note. There will be two or three seconds after each question to write your answer before the answer key is given and explained. You can always pause the video if you need more time to answer, to give your answer. After finish the exercise, check your answer, how many are correct and how many are incorrect. Repeat the process until you get 100% correct answer. Make sure that the 100% correct answers are based on your knowledge, not from your guessing. It is very likely that you will get a very good score on your lab exam number one if you follow this instruction correctly. Okay, we start with number one. The purpose of lab safety rules and protocols is to A, answer the lab stay clean, enable students to complete lab work, uh, ensure that lab activity produce expected results, or to protect everyone in the lab from injury and infection. So what is your answer? Yes, the answer should be to protect everyone in the lab from injury and infection. Number two, which of the following food is allowed in the lab? Fruit, breakfast, food in a container, or never? Okay, give your answer. The answer should be never. Never bring food or drinks in the lab. Number three, which of the following beverages is allowed in the lab? Coke, Mountain Dew, drink in a sealed container, or never? Yes, the answer should be never. Never bring food and drinks in the lab. It is for your own protection to protect from contamination, maybe from hazard materials, chemicals, or infectious agents that might go to your food or drink. Lab coats, gloves, face masks, and goggles are example of lab equipment, personal protective equipment, lab supplies, items provided for students. Which one is the correct answer? Yes, it is maybe provided by your instructor, but the main function of this equipment is for personal protection. So this is personal protective equipment, or also known as PPE. To protect your skin and clothing from hazards such as chemicals and infectious agents, the blank should be worn all the time in the lab. Okay, so which one is your answer? Okay, it is required to wear lab coat in the lab all the time. Okay, so that's the answer. 
which of the following personal items provide the same protection as goggles? Your eyeglasses, soft lenses, sunglasses, or none of the above? Okay, of course, the answer will be none of the above. Your eyeglasses, sunglasses will not protect you from maybe splash of your dissection. So make sure wear goggles. When you are required, when you are required to wear closed toed shoes in the lab, when working with corrosive chemicals, when working with microorganisms, when working with sharp objects, or always? Yeah, the answer should be always. Always wear the closed toed shoes in the lab. It is for your own protection. Never use sandals in the lab. When you are required to tie your long hair, when working with corrosive chemicals, when working with microorganisms, when working with sharp object, or when working with Bunsen burner, what is your answer? Okay, if you have long hair, then you have to tie it, especially if you are working with the flame with the Bunsen burner. So that should be the answer. Soap should be applied to blank hands, wet, dry, clean, glove. Okay, the answer should be wet hands. So make sure you wet your hand before applying the soap. How long should hands be lathered while washing? 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Yeah, the answer should be at least 20 seconds. So wash your hand at least 20 seconds. Or if you put disinfectants on the bands on the table, make sure you let it for at least 20 seconds before drying it with the uh, paper towel. Disinfectant is used on work surface blank before the beginning of lab work, after the lab completed, after any spills of leaf uh, microorganism, or all the above choices are correct. Okay, we should apply the disinfectants before doing our lab work, after finishing our lab work, and also if there is spill on the table. So the answer will be all the above choices are correct. Glass slides, scalpels, razor blades, cover glasses, and capillary tubes are classified as blank. Just your hands. Okay, all of them are sharp objects. Therefore, they are considered as a sharp, sharp object. Glass slides, pipettes, and capillary tube should be disposed in, choose your answer. Okay, it should be disposed in sharp container because they are sharp object. So in the lab, usually you will find the sharp container to put the uh, sharp object in it. Okay, paper towels, lab notes, lens paper should be disposed in tissue answer. Okay, so they are regular trash. So therefore you can dispose them in the regular trash container. Dissection specimens and bacterial culture Plates should be disposed in. Okay, now choose your answer. Okay, so they are biohazard. Therefore, 
you have to dispose them in biohazard bag. When you are finished with the dissection tray, scalpels, and forceps used in dissection, you should, what you should do. Okay, remember, there are reusable material, we're gonna use them again. Therefore, do not dispose them. So wash them in the sink. Okay, so wash them. Which of the following should be done first in the event of lab accidents? Okay, choose your answer. Call 911, be panic, notify campus security, or notify the instructor. Yes, you should notify the instructor first, and the instructor usually will do the rest. Okay, what distinguishes scientific result from non-science-based claim? Okay, read this carefully. Okay, how about A, science results are more complex and difficult to understand. Maybe, but this is not the correct answer. Science results have undergone systematic and critical testing. Yes, this is actually the answer. Okay, so scientific results, they have been undergone, you know, scientific, uh, systemic and also crit critical testing. A good scientific experiment is reproducible. What does this mean? Okay, read the answer carefully. The experiment has been done many times, maybe. Okay? The experiment cannot be repeated. It is not, okay? It should be repeated. Anyone can conduct the same experiment in another lab and expect the same result. This look like this. Okay, look at the last one. Only you can redo the experiment, this now, okay? So good experiment, it can be done by anybody and then uh, with the expectation of the same result, okay? So this is the answer. It can be reproduced again by anyone. Therefore, the method has to be clear okay, when you perform experiment. Which of the following is not part of the four-phase scientific method? Hypothesis, analysis, report, or discussion. Okay, so at least there are four phases for the scientific method. The first one is, of course, the hypothesis. You have to have clear and understandable hypothesis that can be tested uh, with experiment. So the next one is experiment, which is done for testing the hypothesis. And from the uh, experiment, you will get the data and then you should analyze that data. So analysis can be the next. And the last one, okay, in the analysis, after the analysis, you do discussion, and then finally, you can have what we call the conclusion. So these are at least the four phase of uh, scientific methods. So the one that is not there is the uh, discussion, okay? A report is included in this conclusion, okay? So discussion should be the choice. Hypothesis represents blank. Okay, read it carefully. What is hypothesis? It is idea that you know, is this true? Okay, it could be. Okay, it's an idea that you know it is false, false, it could be. Okay, you can, you know, make a, a hypothesis, a negative hypothesis saying that it is not, you know, it is not, uh, will not be happening and etc. Uh, a possible explanation for a problem or observation. It's look like this one. An idea that cannot be test, this is wrong. Okay? So the correct answer will be C. Hypothesis represent a 
possible explanation for a problem or observation. It is important that an hypothesis should be okay, just uh, true, maybe not, okay, it's not, should be false, no, should be correct, no. The correct answer, the hypothesis should be testable. Uh, it can be tested uh, with experiment. You notice that some kids who consume candies have teeth cavities, okay? Suppose that you want to investigate further the relationship between eating candy and teeth cavities. Which of the following statement will be an appropriate hypothesis? Okay, read the choices carefully, okay? Many kids consume candy is not appropriate because it cannot be really tested. There are more kids who do not consume candy. It's similar with the first one. Kids who consume candies have healthier teeth than kids that do not consume candy. This is actually opposite of what you observe. So this is not a good hypothesis. So the last one should be the answer. Kids who consume candies have more teeth cavities than kids that do not consume candies. Then you can perform the experiment. For example, you have several kids. Yes, some of them eat candy. The other than the other group do not eat candy. And then you you know you observe uh, several days or several months, and then give the analyze the data. Okay, what are the two types of variables in an experiment? Control and treatment, control experimental, independent or dependent, constant or non-constant. Which one? Yes, should be independent and dependent variables. Independence means the variable that, that is not depend on other uh, variables. Dependent is the variable that depend on this independent variable. Okay, so the independent variable actually will affect the dependent variables. If you put in the graph, usually you will put the independent variables in the x axis. Okay, independent variables over here. Okay, and these independent variables will change or give effect to the dependent variable, which is put it in the y-axis. So if you change the independent variable, like for example, the time, okay, and then it will change the result, the dependent variable. Okay, for example, the first minute on the one, the second minute is, uh, for example, and the next minute is 10, for example, then you can make this graph. And you see the correlation between time, for example, uh, with the number of results over here. Okay, so this is the two variables of experiment, dependent and dependent variable. Which question you ask yourself to determine the dependent variables? Okay, read the choices carefully. Okay, so dependence mean this is something that you measure. Okay? This is data that you take. Okay? So therefore, when you determine the dependent variable, it will be which one that actually I measure. So. This is, should be the question that you ask when deciding or determining the uh, dependent variables. When constructing graph, it is important to place blank on the x-axis. So I, I mentioned before, for the x-axis, 
Yeah. It is better to put the independent variable. Okay, independent variables in the x-axis. Okay, how about this one? When constructing a graph, it is important to place the blank on the y-axis. So on the y-axis, then you have to put the dependent variables because this is the one that changes. Okay, if you change the independent variable, whether increase eh, or maybe decrease, okay, it's following is based on what happens uh, when you change the independent variables. Okay, the hypothesis the braking distance grows linearly with speed. So which variable will be placed on the x-axis? Braking distance, speed, time to brake, brake time. Okay, choose your answer. Time to brake is not really uh, the, the one that we measure and part of the variable. Break type, it is also not because we don't really uh, want to check the break type. Okay, so you are between breaking distance, uh, the distance and the speed. So which one is actually affected? Speed is the one that will be affecting the distance of break. So therefore, speed should be the independent variable. Speed, okay, independent variable. For example, uh, this, is, this is kilometer per hour or mile per hour. So if it is 10 mile per hour, okay, this is uh, 50, for example, this is 100 mile per hour. Okay, what happened with the distance of speed and distance of braking? So distance of braking should be here. Okay. So if your speed is 10, for example, then you stop maybe after, let's say this is two meters, so this is in meter, okay? This is five, 10, okay? So after, if your speed is 10 mile per hour, maybe you, if you break, then you stop after two meters. If you speed with 50, maybe you stop after five meters. Okay? If your speed is 100, maybe you stop after maybe 20 meters. Okay? So it's gonna be longer distance. So if you connect this, this is a linear correlation. So again, speed will be the independent variable. The distance of break will be the dependent. In the pillbox, uh, in the pillbox experiment, your hypothesis A, B, C, or D. So this is your experiments, your virtual experiments. Uh, make sure you know what you do. Okay. If you don't know, please uh, repeat the pillbox experiment. So in this, uh, in that experiment, your hypothesis was related to the environment that pillbox prefers. Okay, so you put uh, corn, stock, and sand. Okay, so there are two different types of environment. The environment with corn, stock, and the environment with sand. Okay, you compare these two different environments. Which one that the pillbox prefer? How is the control group treated in a scientific experimentations? Okay, so this is uh, how you call, treat the control group, A, B, C. The control group receive only experimental variable? No. Okay, so the control group never received the experimental variable because they are control groups. Okay, 
the control group receive all the same treatment except the experimental variable. This should be the answer. Okay, look at C. The control group is treated exactly like the experimental group. No, it's not exactly. The control group, uh, everything is constant, the same like the experimental group, but the control group does not receive the experimental variables. Okay, so this one should be the answer. In the pillbox experiment, the substance used as the control was the this, the sand, cornstarch, or water. Use your hands. Okay, just remember when you perform this experiment, you're comparing two, two environments, which is environment with sand and cornstarch. Okay, cornstarch is actually food. Okay. And this is actually the experimental treatment. So which one is gonna be the control? It will be the sand. In the pillbox experiment, how many pillbox did you need to use to get good information for the experiment? One, three, 10, or 100? Choose your answer. Okay, remember on that experiment, you, know, you put there are two environments. Okay, there are four areas actually with the petri dish that is connected. Okay, the top and bottom petri dish. Okay, on the top, you put corn stock. Okay and then sand. Okay, so this is the top over here is considered as a treatment group or experimental groups. The bottom one over here, because you only put sand and sand, eh, left and right. So this is a control groups okay now how many pillbacks you put in the experimental group and also in the control group okay again make sure you perform this experiment repeat again remember on each group you put 10 okay 10 uh, pillbacks okay you put five over here okay and five Fill box over here. This is also five and five. Okay, so total in each group, you put 10 fill box. In the fill box experiments, an important part of the experimental strategy was to blank. Okay, to read this strategy, uh, strategy uh, carefully. Place content in both sides is not, okay? Place it in both sides of each plate, no. Make a suppression at the beginning of the experimental, uh, no, okay? Because you actually have to observe in interval time. Okay, not only in the beginning. Make us work at regular interval time. Yeah, this is the answer. So your interval time, remember for that experiment is every two minutes. Okay, every two minutes, okay, until total 12 minutes. Okay, that was the experiment with the pill box. According to the results of the pillbox experiments, which one is the result? Pillbox does not show preference, no. Pillbox prefer wet environment. You do not check head testing for wet or dry environment. So this is wrong. Pillbox prefer sand over construct. Uh, no, if you do the experiment correctly, it is not, okay? 
So the correct one is that Philbeth prefer constant over sand because this is food. Okay, so they are actually attracted by this food. So there are more billbats on the constant uh, area compared to the area that only have sand. Which of the following is a defense mechanism of billbats against predation? Hitting, stopping, running, or rolling up. Okay, remember fill pads is look like this. Okay. And if it is in the dangerous situation, it can roll up. Okay. So rolling up. You decide to test Pilbach's preferences for an acidic environment. So let's say you decide to do or perform your own experiment using uh, acidic environment. In one set of the chamber, you put a piece of paper, moisture with water. Okay, so this is in one side. Let's say you have two sides of chamber. Okay, in one side, you put paper with wet, okay, wet with water. You will put blank in the other side of chamber. So for the best experiment that follow the scientific methods, which one you have to do? You put a cup of vinegar on the other side? No, okay. A piece of paper moisture with the vinegar? Yeah, it looks like okay, an orange uh, acidic water. Now, remember when you perform experiment, both sides, okay, the treatment has to be that's what we call the constant, have to be the same. If you put piece of paper, moisture with water, so you put piece of paper over here, and the other side, you also have to put piece of paper, okay. If water is a control, okay, you must turn with water, then the other side should be put the treatment, which is acidic solution. What is acidic solution? You can use vinegar. So you put pepper moisture with the vinegar over here. So that's the uh, correct procedure for this experiment. So piece of paper, Motion with vinegar. So it's going to be the same, it's constant. Okay. So piece of paper in one side, piece of paper in the other side. Motion with control, like water, okay? and motion with the treatment on the other side. In an experiment determining the effect of antibiotics, uh, no, it's antibiotics on the treatment of pneumonia in mice. So this is to know whether antibiotics is effective for a, a pneumonia in mice. Which of the following procedure is not correct? So which one is not correct? Okay, control group consisted of healthy mice did not receive the antibiotics. Okay. Experimental group consisted of mice with pneumonia. That correct? Remember, we're gonna testing the pneumonia. Did receive the antibiotics? So the experimental group receive did receive the antibiotics. That's correct. Okay? That statement is correct. Or procedure is correct. Control group consisted of mice with pneumonia. Yes. Okay. So these mice also have pneumonia, but this control group did not receive the antibiotic, that's correct. So the procedure is not correct is A. Because what? Because we are testing the antibiotics again, pneumonia. So the mice that will be used for this test or experiment should be mice with pneumonia. So healthy mice is not used. Okay. This is about microscope now. 
Which of the following pictures showing the correct way to carry a microscope? Picture A, B, or C. Okay, remember, when you bring the microscope, you have to use both hands. One hand under the base of the microscope, and the other hand holding the arms of the microscope. So make sure you bring the microscope like this. This is incorrect. That is dangerous. This is also incorrect. Okay, so C should be the correct answer. When storing the microscope, which objective lenses should be placed over the stage? The four time, the 10 time, the 40 time, or the 100 time objective lens. Okay, just remember when we store the microscope, okay, and we starting or finish using the microscope, always place the shortest one. Okay, always place the shortest one on uh, the stage, okay, over the stage. So this one is stage. Okay, so put the shortest one, which is the four time. It's called the scanning lens. When storing the microscope, the stage should be in the blank position. A, B, C, or D. Okay, remember, we are protecting the lens in the objective lenses over okay, here. So when we're storing it, we have to pull these states fully down. Make sure it is really, really down. Okay, so you have to use this course adjustment knob to put or to pull these states fully down. So the answer will be fully down. The arrow point to the, okay, choose your answer. Okay, so this area over here is called the arms of the microscope. It should be this one. Okay, how about this picture? Where the arrow point to? Uh, this over here is called the ocular lens. Ocular mean eyes. So this is the lens that close to the eyes. So ocular lenses. And usually ocular lens have 10 time. You, know, you will see the magnification on the side of the tube. Okay? So 10 time magnification or 10 time power. The arrow point to, okay, I already mentioned this, what we call the stage. Okay, next, the arrow point to, under the stage, there is a knob or lever uh, that can change the light that enter into the object so to dim the light or to increase the light and this is called the iris okay so iris diaper okay look this picture okay so it's okay so you have objective lens there are four of them so one two three four five and this objective line, uh, lenses are hold by this part of the microscope. And this part can be uh, revolved, okay? It can be turned. So therefore, the name is the revolving nose piece. The arrow point to, okay, I already mentioned, this is the lens that close to the object. So we have object over here on the stage, the object that you see. And because this lens close to the object, 
then it is called the objective lenses. There are four of them, okay? The scanning lens, and the power is four times. It can magnify object four times bigger. The second one is called the low power, and low power has 10 times magnification. The next one is called the high power. Okay. The high power has 40 time magnification. And the last one is called the oil immersion lens. Okay. And this one has 100 time magnification. Okay, so this is the power of each objective lens. Remember, you also have another lens on the top, which is the ocular lens. It has usually 10 times, okay, magnification. So if you see the objects and using one of these, let's say you use the scanning lens, then you will find what we call the total magnification, which is the multiplication of scanning lens, I mean the ocular lens, which is 10 times, okay? time with any lens that you use. Okay, if you use scanning lens, then time four. Okay, so the TM will be 40 times. If you use the low power, then the TM will be 10 times 10, which is 100 times. If you use the high power, then the TM will be 10 times 40, which is 400 times. If you use the oil immersion, then the TM will be 10 times 100, which is 1,000 time magnification. Okay, so that's the uh, how to calculate the total magnification based on which type of objective lenses that you use. The arrow point to the, okay, so, over here, you have two knobs, actually. This is bigger knob, and this is smaller knob. Okay. This bigger knob is used for uh, putting down and up, okay? moving down and up the stage very fast. Okay? So therefore, it's called the course, okay? course adjustment knob. The other one also move the stage, but in a very soft movement. So therefore it's called the fine adjustment. So this arrow pointing into the course adjustment node. The arrow point to the, okay, so this one, you can also turn it and it will bring the stage up and down, but it's very soft movement. Okay, very fine movement. Therefore, it's called a fine adjustment knob. Okay, now how about this arrow pointing to this? This is another knob, and you also have another knob at the bottom of here. Okay, so the the upper bottom. Yeah. The upper button over here is called the mechanical stage upper knob. Yeah. What is the function? If you turn in, then it will bring the stage front or back, forward or backward. Okay, so that's the function, the upper knob. Okay, now how about the other one? So this one is the lower knob. What is the function? This will move the stage left or right, okay, side by side, to the left or to the right. So this is the function of the lower knob. Which part of the microscope will be used first to adjust the focus when starting with the lowest power? To adjust the focus, okay? This is the one that we're gonna use, okay? The adjustment 
No. But which one? You have course adjustment now and fine adjustment now. Okay. The first one that you have to use is the, actually the course adjustment knob, but you have to put the lower lens, the lowest lens, which is the scanning or the low power objective lens. Okay. So it's going to be the course adjustment knob or course focus. Which objective will be used first to adjust the focus with the course focus? Okay, so the objective lens. Which lens? Okay, have to be used if we using this course adjustment knob. So when you turn this up and down, the stage up and down with the course adjustment knob, you have to make sure that you use the shortest okay? the shortest objective length which is the scanning okay? the scanning lens so the answer will be the scanning lens if you use the longest one over here okay? remember when you put this up it might contact with the lens it will break the lens over here so therefore the lowest one should be used when using the course adjustment knob Which of the following component of microscopy is related to the apparent size of object? So which one should be? Of course, size eh, is related to the magnifications, make it bigger. Okay, so it will be related to the magnification of the microscope. The lens of the microscope that is responsible for the magnification of the specimen is the A, B, C, or D. Okay, well, how about the ocular lens? It's not really because you only have one type over here. Okay? The power is only one type, 10. Look at the objective lens. You have four times. This is 10 times. Uh, the other one is 40 times. Okay? 100 times, so you can increase eh, the magnification. Therefore, this is the one that will be responsible for magnification, which is the objective lens. Okay, so ocular lens is not. Which of the following lens of the microscope that further magnify the image produced by the objective lens, A, B, C, or D. Okay, remember when you put the object here, it will be magnified by this one of these objective lens. Okay, so this is the first magnification. Then it will bring up over here, go to the second lens, which is the ocular lens. So this is the one that will magnify more of the object. Okay. So therefore, the total magnification, you have to multiply the power of this objective lens with the power of this ocular lens. Okay, so the second one will be the ocular lens. Which of the following quality factors is usually expressed in numbers such as four time, 10 time, 40 time, or 100 time? What is this about? This is the magnification, okay? Uh, maybe four time, 100 time, 400 time. This is related to magnification of the object. Adding stains of color on the specimen is used for enhancing A, B, C, or D. Resolution is not 3D. Resolution is detail. Okay. Magnification, size, no. You don't really increase size with color. Okay. Contrast, yes. Okay. So this is to be the answer. Usually, you know, cell is really clear, transparency. 
you need to put color in order to increase the contrast of the object. Which of the following is defined as the ability to distinguish fine detail? Okay, for like example, if you see two objects up here, okay, sometimes if the Microsoft cannot see detail, you look like only have two uh, one object. But if the Microsoft is really good, you can see that actually two objects that close one another. Okay, so that property is called the resolution detail. Which of the following is defined as the ability to enlarge object? Enlarge size magnification. Which of the following is produced by multiplications of the ocular lens and the objective lens being used? So this is multiplication of ocular lens, usually 10 times. Okay, which one of this objective lens? It is called the total magnification. Increasing the blank would allow us to tell if what appear as one object or two objects very near each other. So this is actually for seeing detail. Okay, so detail is property of resolutions. If you cannot see the object with your eyes, you can increase the blank to make it bigger. So which one? Okay, so this is size. So size related to magnification. So you can increase this. Okay, magnification by changing the objective lenses from smaller one to the bigger one or to the uh, high power. The lenses of bright field microscope are responsible for the of the object that you are viewing. Let's put it forward. Of course, lenses. Uh, microscope mean you want to see small object into bigger object. Okay, so this is actually the responsibility of the lenses to increase the size, which is magnification. The blank causes the stage to move back and forth. So back and forth. Remember, I already mentioned that back and forth performed by this top knob over here, okay, the upper knob, the mechanical, mechanical stage upper knob, back and forth. The blank causes the stage to move left and right, okay, stage moving left and right, which one control that movement? This is the lower or bottom knob, okay? So the lower knob of the mechanical stage. The blank causes the stage to move upward and downward, okay? So remember again, these two knob, course adjustment and fine adjustment knob will move the stage up and down. Okay, so look at that choice, and this is the only one available. So choose the the course adjustment knob. The course and fine adjustment knob are used to adjust A, B, C, or D. Okay, so this two knob over here, course and fine adjustment knob, is to adjust, of course, the stage. Okay, because it is moving up and down. 
okay, moving the stitch up and down. When it is moving up and down, it's actually adjusting the distance, okay, the space between the stitch and the objective lens use, okay? So it is adjusting the stage and the objective lens. The cost adjustment knob is only used when using A, B, C, or D. Okay, we already mentioned that, that this course adjustment knob will move the stage up and down very fast. So make sure Okay. When we use this course adjustment knob, you only put the lowest, okay, the lowest objective lens, which is the scanning and the lower power or the low power objective lens. If you use the longer one over here, the high power or the immersion oil, it might break the lens because it can touch the slide that you put on the stage. Okay, so make sure when using the course adjustment knob, then put or place the scanning lens or the low power lens. The objective lenses of the compound light microscope are attached to the, okay, attached to this. Okay, this part of microscope, it is called a rotating nose piece or revolving nose piece because it can be rotated to change the objective lenses. The power or magnification of the scanning lens is, as you already mentioned, the shortest one is called the scanning lens, is only have four times power or magnification. High power, okay. high power. What is the power for the high power? Remember the sequence scanning and then low power and then high power and the oil immersions. Okay. So this is the sequence of lenses based on the power. Scanning only have four times, low power 10 times, the high power 40 times, and the oil immersion is 100 times. Okay, so the answer should be 40 times for the high power. The power or magnification of the oil immersion objective lens is, we already mentioned, it's gonna be the 100 times. The total magnification achieved when using the low power objective lens with the 10 time ocular lens or the eyepieces is, okay, so TM, so total magnification of TM, okay is the multiplication of ocular lens power, which is 10 times, with one of these objective lens. It is mentioned we use the low power. What is the low power magnification? It's 10 times, okay? So 10 times 10 equal 100 times. So this should be the answer. The total magnification achieved when using the high power objective lens with the 10 time ocular lens will be, the okay, TM is multiplication of ocular lens, which is 10 time with the objective lens we use. We use high power. High power is 40 time. Okay, time, uh, 10 times 40 will be 400 time. The total magnification achieved when using the oil immersion objective lens with the 10 time ocular lenses would be, 
Okay, so again, PM, ocular lens, power is 10 times. And we use the oil immersion, okay, which is 100 times. Okay, so time 100 will be 1,000 times. So this is actually the highest magnification that we can achieve using this bright field microscope. The highest magnification will be 1,000 times. Which objective lens is required drop of oil on the slide to be viewed clearly? A, B, C, or D. Okay, so the name is telling you when we're using the oil immersion uh, lens, then we have to put a drop of oil okay, on the slide. It will increase the resolution. Okay, so. The one that needs oil is the oil immersion lens. Which objective lenses could get dirty if you move the revolving nose piece after using the oil immersion lens? So which one? So remember, for the oil immersion lens, you need drop of oil. Okay? And then if you want to change the lens, uh, if you uh, move this lens, the nose piece, the one that will get dirty with this oil will be the next longest objective lens, which is the high power, because it is still long over here. So it might get dirty. So when you move this lens, make sure you move to the lowest one. So the lowest one, like the scanning, and the low power will not get dirty with this oil if you move or if you rotate the nose piece. Okay, so the one that will get dirty will be the, the next longest one, which is the high power lens. Which objective lens provide the least total magnification? Of course the scanning lens because it's four time only. Okay. And then four time if you use the with the ocular lens over here, okay, time 10 okay, is only 40 times. So this is the the least total magnification. The highest total magnification will be 1000 times when we use this immersion oil. Which objective lens provides the greatest total magnification? Again, this should be this oil immersion because this is 1000 times with the ocular lens 10 times. And if you give us this 1000 times. So this is the greatest magnification is going to be. Which of the following object can only seen by using an electron microscope? Okay. Human cell, bacterial cell, plant cell, or uh, plant cell, or viruses. Human cells, bacterial cell. Okay. And this one may be small, okay, but you still be able to see them using the bright field microscope okay, or light microscope. Okay. This one is really small. Okay. So in nanometer, which is, you cannot use the light microscope, then you have to use this electron microscope to see the viruses. Okay, now cell membranes and transport across the cell membrane. Okay, the cell membranes allow some molecule to pass. Okay, so this cell membrane over here, allow the molecule to pass and does not allow, so allows 
and does not allow some other molecule. This ability is called impermeable. Of course, it's not correct because this is permeable. It is permeable, yes, okay. But it say allow and does not allow some other. Okay. So it's gonna be selective over here. So combination between selective and permeable. So be selectively permeable. Which of the following membrane transport does not require ATP or energy? Which one? Okay, so the one that does not require energy is called passive transport. Active mean requires energy. Which of the following is not a passive transport? Okay, so there are two types of transport across the membranes. Okay, the first one is passive transport. Okay, the second one is active transport. The passive transports have several types. Okay? The first one is called the simple diffusion. So the molecule just diffuse or cross the cell membrane easily. Second one is also diffusion, but using help eh, with the protein. It's called a facilitated diffusion. Eh? And the last one is the movement of water. It has special name, it's called osmosis. Okay, so which one is not passive transport will be the sodium potassium pump. So that from the name, it is actually require energy. Okay, so this is actually one of the active transport. In diffusions, molecules move from an area of blank concentration to an area with blank concentration. So what is the rule for diffusion? If you have membranes like this, okay, let's say the cell membrane, okay, inside, outside, okay. So the, move, the diffusion is movement of molecule from higher concentration to lower concentration. So this molecule will move from higher to lower area, okay, high to low. Diffusion of nutrients and oxygens across a cell membrane is categorized as active or passive. Okay, so this is the what happened with the nutrients and oxygen. So let's say this is cell. This is cell membranes. Remember, it's double layer, okay, phospholipid bilayer. And our nutrients will be carried by the blood vessel, okay, blood circulation. Okay, carry nutrients, oxygen. It will be released into this area outside the cell. So therefore, you're gonna be having a lot of oxygen and a lot of nutrients in this area. Okay, compared to the inside area. So what happens, these nutrients and oxygen will enter to the cell, okay, from higher concentration to the lower concentration, and it is called the diffusion. So from the name and from these conditions also, you know that diffusion is a passive transport. It does not require energy. Which of the following will affect diffusion rate? A, B, C, or D. Okay, diffusion rate, the rate of, or the speed of diffusions, 
is affected by several things like the mo molecular size, okay? Smaller, it's gonna be faster, okay? Faster rate. Concentration gradient, yes, okay? The more, the more molecule, then it's gonna be faster. The more concentrations, the faster the rate's gonna be. Temperature, yes, when we increase temperature, then it's gonna be faster, okay? So the answer will be all the above are correct. Why does increase in temperature increase diffusion rate? So why? Okay, read the choice carefully. The molecular concentration will increase. No, temperature will not increase the concentration of molecules. Molecular concentration is no. This is similar, which is not the reason. The molecular gradients increase. No, it will not increase or decrease gradients. The temperature will increase increase the frequency of collision. Okay? So when the collision increase, then the speed will also increase. Okay, so that's how the temperature increase the speed okay? by increasing the frequency of molecular collisions. Which of the following molecules will diffuse the fastest? Okay, remember the rule. Smaller but heavier. So uh, size and weight is also important. Okay, smaller, faster. Okay, lighter molecule, faster. Okay, look for this one. Smaller and lighter. Smaller, lighter. So it should be. How do molecules movement or motions in a media? Okay, how? Now just you know things about the oxygen in the environment. How does oxygen move in our environment? They move whatever they want to move. Okay, they're gonna move there, there, okay, up, down. This is gonna be random, okay, random direction. If molecules are led to diffuse across the cell membrane for a long time, so this is long time, what would happen? Okay. So what will happen with the molecules? Let's say you have membranes and then you have oxygens over here, more on one side and less on the other side. Okay? And of course, it will be more from higher concentration to the lower concentration. After a long time, okay, after you let it for a long time, what happened? Okay, the concentration will be equal, will be balanced. So you have four over here, only two, then after a long time, you might have both sides will be having the same concentration. And this is what we call the equilibrium. The equilibrium of equal percent of molecule inside and outside the cell will be reached. Okay, so this is, will be the answer. Okay, after long term, it's gonna be equal. If a semi-permeable container that has 80% oxygen is placed in a chamber that has 20% oxygen, what would happen? So you have, let's say, bigger chamber, and then you have smaller container over here. Okay, so this bigger container have 20% oxygen, which is less oxygen, right? and this one has 80%. Which is a lot of oxygen okay, in this small container. So, what happened? Of course, 
the oxygen will be moved from higher concentrations to the lower concentration from the container to the chamber. Oxygen will move from the container to the chamber until the equilibrium will be reached. Okay, that should be the answer. Molecular motion is an example of blank energy, potential, kinetic, chemical, or food. So movement, motion, it is related to kinetic. Okay, so it should be kinetic energy. Now, what is about potential? Potential, chemical, uh, food, yeah, all of these are uh, stored energy. It's not used for motion. It is still in the stored uh, substances like food or chemical. It is called the potential energy. What is solution? Solution is A, B, C, or D. So solution is when you put solute uh, uh, you put solute in the solvent. Okay, like maybe water. Solute like for example salt. Okay. So when you put salts in water, it dissolves. Okay. So solu uh, solution is a solvent dissolved in solute. No, it should be solute dissolved in solvent. Small hydrophobic non-polar molecules such as oxygen, carbon dioxide are transported across the membrane by A, B, C, or D. So remember, outside the cell, there will be a lot of oxygen because it is carried by our blood. And this oxygen then will cross the plasma membranes, will be used by this mitochondria. Yeah, so this is mitochondria to produce the energy, the ATP. And the byproducts will be carbon dioxide. So there will be a lot of carbon dioxide inside the cell. And this carbon dioxide will be moved out from the cell. Okay. So because they are small, non-polar molecules, they can cross the cell membrane easily, simple. A simple diffusion. Okay, how about larger molecules such as proteins or amino acid, carbohydrates like glucose are transported across the cell membrane. So for a bigger molecule, let's say glucose, for example, this is big. So it cannot cross this plasma membrane because they are big. Okay. So in order to transport this glucose, it requires a transporter. Okay. Protein that transport this glucose is called a transporter. Then glucose from outside, which is we have a lot of glucose outside, okay, will be transported in to the cell. Okay. So this is also diffusion because it's coming from higher concentration to the lower concentration. However, it is required help, okay, facilitation. Therefore, this process is called a facilitated diffusion. Now, how about hydrophilic? or polar molecules like ions, like we have a lot of sodium ions outside the cell. Okay? And then these sodium ions need to be uh, transported inside the cell. But because this is polar molecule, it will not cross the plasma membranes. It will not crossing the cell membrane. So how we transport this ion? 
in the plasma membrane, we will have channel. Okay, it's called the ion channel that will be used to transport this ion inside. Okay, and this ion channel helping the ion to move across the membrane. Therefore, the name will be the same, facilitative diffusion. But this time using the channel instead of transporters. Dialysis like machines, the dialysis machine cleans the waste from the blood by a, B, C, or D. So what the dialysis machine do? It actually cleans the blood by diffusion. Yeah, it's by the simple diffusion. So uh, waste materials like ammonia, okay, urea, they are considered as a small molecule, so they can move across the semi-permeable membranes used in this machine to cross from the blood to the machine. Therefore, it is called a simple diffusion. Which of type of muscle tissue lacks of striation or stripe? Which one? The name is telling you smooth mean no stripes. So therefore, type of muscle tissue that do not have stripes is the smooth muscle. Which, uh, uh, which type of muscle tissue has striations and branches? Okay, so again, when you do the experiment, you're gonna see three different type of muscle tissue. The one that look like this, spindle muscle, okay, no stripe. This is called the smooth muscle. The other one, you're gonna look and see under the microscope like this, it's brands, okay? It's only have one nucleus per cell, it has stripe. Okay, so this one is cardiac muscle. Okay. And the other one is very long muscle, cylindrical muscle with stripe and many nuclei per cell. Okay. And this is the skeletal muscle. Okay. Now the question is which one has striation or stripes and branches. So the answer will be the cardiac muscle. Which type of muscle tissue has striations and many nuclei per cell? Okay, I just explained that. The one that has long cylindrical muscle will stripe and many nuclei is the Skeletal muscle. The skeletal muscle are attached to A, B, C, or D. The name is telling you skeleton, which is bone. Okay. So the skeletal muscle are attached to the bones. So this is actually the one that move our bones, the skeletal muscle. The cardiac muscles are found on the wall of A, B, C, or D. Okay, cardiac mean heart, the heart. Therefore, from the name, you know that these cardiac muscles are found on the wall of the heart. This is the one that pumps the blood. Okay, the last one, the smooth muscles are found on the wall of A, B, or C. Okay, the smooth muscles, okay, they are located on the organs 
that has lumen. It's called the hollow organs. Like for example, our GI tract, the esophagus, stomach. Okay, so this is GI tract organs. Esophagus, stomachs, intestines. Okay, they all have the smooth muscle on their wall. Also, urinary tract organs. Okay, like the bladder, okay, ureter, urethra. They also have smooth muscle on their wall. The respiratory tract organs, okay, like trachea, bronchus. They also have the smooth muscle on their wall. And the last one is also blood vessel, okay? Blood vessels like arteries and veins, they also have smooth muscle on their wall. So hollow organs, GI tract organs, urinary tract organs, respiratory tract organs, blood vessel, they all have smooth muscle on their wall. That's all for this. And